Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up towards Huganess in the northwest corner of Skåne here in the south of Sweden once again. So for this review we're going to try another one of the little local breweries that's only recently opened up and as I always say I enjoy introducing these little breweries to you and I've heard some good things about this one actually. So for this one we're going to try my first beer from the Coolens Brewery and we're having a taste today of their Svart IPA. Basically the or Svart Ipa, I guess you, you should say, if you're doing the Swedish pronunciations. But this one is their Black IPA. It comes in at 6.5% and it's got Amarillo hops in it. And if you've watched the channel before, you will know that I love the big orangey hops. You know, the likes of the Mosaic, the Pacifica, the, um, the Amarillo, of course, being the other one, Mandarina Bavaria. I love the big orangey IPAs. And I don't think I've ever come across a Black IPA, actually, that's used Amarillo. So I'm very curious to see how this one turns out, actually. It should be a little bit different from some of the other ones that I've reviewed and I think this is a style that's been forgotten about a lot recently with the whole kind of hazy uh, you know the New England hazy IPA craze that's been going on so very, as I say very curious just to see how this one it turns out especially from one of the very very small breweries I think these guys are actually one of the smallest breweries in Sweden at the moment so yeah should be an interesting review I'm looking forward to the beer and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Cullen's Bravery very first time I'm trying one of their beers like I said there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about the Cullen Bravery then on to my brewery notes so the Cullen Bravery as I mentioned to you are based in Hoganes which is in the northwest corner of Skåne a little bit to the northwest again of Helsingborg, but the company was founded by five friends. So this is Leonard Alberry, Magnus Burjensen, Paul F. Singh, Frederick Kulinstjerna, and also Bent Torn as well. I've got a feeling that I pronounced the second guy in their surname wrong, so I do apologise about that. But these guys used to brew beer together in a garage in very small 25 litre batches. But in 2016, they moved to a new bigger premises at Vesperondelen, which is between Hoganes and Vespe, and they officially founded the company. I think it was 2016. But they very recently have upped their production capacity from 100 litres per brew to 200 litres. And this actually, as I said, makes them one of the smallest breweries in Sweden. And apparently they reckon they'll brew around somewhere around the 6,000 litres of beer mark for the whole of 2018. Like you say, a very, very small little brewery, these guys. But the brewery, of course, is named after Cullen, or it's also kind of called... Um, Kula Hevlen as well, which is the peninsula that sticks out of uh, just to the north of Helsingborg in the northwest corner of uh, of Skåne. So this one literally means the uh, the peninsula. It's just literally the peninsula's brewery. But from what I saw, if you stick Kulin into uh, Google Translate as well, it also means coal. So yeah, in some ways it's the coal brewery. In some ways it's the the peninsula brewery, the Kulin Peninsula Brewery. If you like, probably Kulin Peninsula Brewery, as I was saying, is the um, the proper name for this one. But yeah, really interesting little brewery, and it is cool when you get little random ones like this. So this is probably the first beer review that you're going to see of this brewery. But if their beers are good, as I've heard they are. I probably will review a few more of them, but um, yeah, should be an interesting one this. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up. There you can see there's an elephant on the back of this one. I think that one is an African elephant because he's got the big ears. But yeah, nicely presented this one. I do like that. There's the little Cullen Bruggery symbol on that. It would be cool if you put that on the bottle caps there, but I guess when they're only brewing around 6,000 litres of beer, you know, that's 18,330 bottles per year, you know, it's probably quite expensive for them to do that. But um, the stats on this beer then, it's a 6.5% black IPA, like I said, the malt base in this one is a uh, pale roasted and chocolate malt, and the hops are Amarillo, Centennial and Columbus, so yeah, it should be a really interesting one. Amarillo always gives you a nice kind of juicy orangey flavour, Centennial is a, a nice kind of lemony note, and the Columbus is is mainly a sort of um 
you know, just a bittering hop. It gives you a nice kind of spicy, almost aniseedy um, kind of bitterness to it. So it says um, on the side here, now that you have opened up this beer, you must stand up and enjoy, uh, enjoy it for yourself. So for now... My Swedish, my Swedish brain is definitely not working tonight. It's telling you a little bit on the side here. Um, this, you know, this beer is like it's one of the smallest. It says something about the beer, the brewery being the smallest in the whole of Skåne, maybe the smallest in Sweden, and the smallest perhaps in the whole of the world. But it tells you a little bit. Um, yeah, it's basically saying now you've opened this beer, you must stand up, enjoy your time, and um, for never, uh, you never should take it for granted. Basically, it's the brewery is named after um, Kulavonen in Skåne, and then it says on the side, maybe the small, smallest brewery in Skåne, maybe the smallest brewery in Sweden, and maybe the smallest one in the whole world there. So I think I've actually translated that, despite my earlier um, brain fart there. But yeah, nicely presented beer this one. Um, so without further ado, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. Then you know, should be really good. So yeah, without further ado, let's crack it open. Nice little bit of a smoky opening there. Some of it trying to escape, but let's get it out and into the glass. Just watch the head doesn't go too crazy on this one as sometimes it can do in the beers. Yeah this one is for the most part going to behave itself by the looks of things. Yeah there we go. There you are, that'll settle down a little bit. Um, I don't know if it says when it was bottled this one so Inside, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ah, yeah, it says it's best before 29, 2019, the June. So this one, by the time I'm filming, this is about two and a half uh, months or so old, this one. So that's a kind of good age for the black IPA. For me, you don't want to drink the black IPAs too fresh. You do want to let them mature a little bit. I've always found that they get a little bit more juicy in that regard. And it's an interesting style, I think, because it's one that I've always felt you get more out of it when it's an imperial one and you get more of the brown sugary notes out of it. So this one, um, at 6.5%, is a regular black IPA rather than an imperial black. So we'll just need to see how we get on with this one. But as you can see, and as you would expect from the style, it's poured a nice dark sort of ebony colour this one. It reminds me of ebony wood a look quite a bit. So there's a two finger frothy, I would say light beige head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. Um, if I hold it up to the light like I was saying, you know, it's not even it's, it's not even got a little bit of a chestnutty edge to it. This one is completely um, pitch black. There's not even much light coming through this one. So I think this beer um, would be a little bit hazy, but obviously you're not going to see that simply because of the colour. But yeah, looks really nice and pretty much as you would expect from the black IPA style. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we go on. You can see the head has already died down on this one a little bit, but yeah. So yeah, a little bit of that kind of roasted black malt coming out with this one. You can smell some of the chocolate in there as well. It definitely has that distinctive kind of chocolate, you know, and I would say the chocolate that's coming out of this is almost, it's got a little touch of the milky kind of chocolate, you know, but at the same time it's got some of that higher, um, that, you know, the dark chocolate, the higher cocoa coming out of it as well. A little bit of a bready note too, I would think. But overall, I would say this beer is actually quite mild in terms of its aroma. But you can pick up a little bit of an earthy quality from the hops. A little bit of a... There's a nice little bit of a kind of spicy floral aromatic note to it as well. But I'm really not getting much in the way of fruitiness. I thought there might have been a little bit of fruitiness come out of it. There was a little touch of something when you opened up the bottle, but when you put your, your uh, nose into it... Um, with this one, it's, it's got a little touch of something. You can pick up a little faint hint of orange from the Amarillo, but there's not much else kind of coming out of the aroma. This one, it is a very, very mild aroma, I think, on this beer. But as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. You don't have to spend too much time with this one because, as I say, very, very mild aroma. But let's have a taste of this beer then. So this one is the Swarth Ipa, the Black IPA from the Kulin Brewery on the Kulin Peninsula, just outside of Huguenes on uh, in Skåne here in the south of Sweden. So let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Yeah. Quite a 
an interesting one that. First impression, the mouth feel that it has, it almost comes across like it's, um, you could have poured this kind of straight out of a, you know, one of these pool kegs that you get in England. The mouth feel of this one does remind me of that, but at the same time, it does have a good little bit of um, carbonation, if that makes sense. It, it's kind of sort of battling between those two, that almost cast condition thing, but it's got the, the carbonation, and you saw how big the head was on this one. That's simply because of how long it was in the bottle, but the flavours of this one, are coming out nicely and as I said I always think you need to give a black IPA just a little bit longer to kind of mature to get the proper sort of flavours out of it because I think it just if you drink it too fresh I think this is one of the, the styles for me that you don't want to drink overly fresh yeah the flavours of this one are coming out really nicely and you know trying this beer it does make me want to um, to try some of their other ones actually they've apparently got like a, a Citra Tripel or something like that which I think would be a really really interesting beer the Belgian style beer that's the one um, that I would be very very curious to try actually but in terms of a, a kind of straight up black IPA this one you know is, is really quite solid actually so if you like this title by all means have a go at this one So yeah, um, and it actually, I would say, out of the black IPAs I've had, this one does lean a little bit more towards the sweet side of things, which is interesting. So you've got a nice kind of roasty black malt backbone to this, and it starts to push its way out a little bit more as you go further and further into the aftertaste. You can feel a little bit of it just pushing its way out, but it's got a nice bit of a kind of bready base to it, which is, uh, which is good. You can feel the smoothness of that pale malt in there. I would bet you it's German pale malt we've used in this one, just going by how smooth it is. But the roasty black malt is forming the backbone of the beer. A little bit of a pale malt on top of that. And you can feel right in the middle of your palate, you've got a little touch of a kind of chocolatey sweetness. But I would say the bready quality kind of um, overpowers a lot of that, if that makes sense. There is just a little touch of it, so it's nice and quite subtle, I think. Yeah, I like how that kind of comes across. As I always say, as I was saying earlier, when it comes to the black IPAs, one of the best ones I ever had was uh, black salts and body malts from Toil from over in Denmark. You know that I think for me is the kind of pinnacle black IPA. Although there's probably ones over in America that um, you know would run it close because there's so many breweries over there. And for me, this one. You know, you know, that beer was the one that really convinced me that that style really needs to be imperial and have a little bit of that kind of uh, caramel backbone. But as I'm going through this one, they, these guys have done it in a slightly different way. They've used the chocolate malt just to give the beer that little bit of sweetness. So it's an interesting approach. I have had a lot of um, the black IPAs that haven't, you know, they've just used a straight up black malt and pale malt malt base. And for me, that doesn't quite work. I think you really you lose something from the beer if you don't balance out the hops with a little bit of sweetness and for me even with the New England IPAs these days it's a smooth malt base but it doesn't quite have the um, you know the sweetness if that makes sense I think you always need a little bit of something sweet in there just to balance out the hoppy side of things and you know just to give the beer a bit more complexity but these guys have done it in quite an interesting way so well done to them that I wouldn't have thought of that from from my own home brewing uh, kind of exercises so maybe another thing for me to think about so thumbs up to Cullen Brewery for that one Cullen I should say Cullen's a place back in Scotland but yeah the, the malt base in this one, as I say, is quite interesting. It's fairly straight up and it's fairly simple, but it works, and it works well. And you can't really ask for much more than that, can you? Um, so, yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a little touch of earthiness there. As you kind of come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you get a little bit of a kind of floral aromaticity out of this one. Um, it's just, it, the earthiness is there, it be, smooths out, and then a little bit of the floral character, then round the very front curve of the palate, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy, and of course behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that little oily bubble, where the juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. So yeah, it's interesting this one, definitely a little bit of the orangey quality and a little bit of the 
one kind of lemony notes, you know they've got centennial in this one, that will give you a little bit of the lemony qualities, you can feel that there, particularly in the aftertaste, it's coming out a little bit more, and you can also feel some of the oranges, but straight up at the start of the beer, I think it's, it's, it's got a little touch of red fruit to it as well, which is interesting, and I always find that really cool with some of these hops, how you can, um, you know, you get completely different fruity notes from them when you mix them with darker malts like this. You know, the Cascade, for example, normally it's a grapefruit, but you get a little bit of a figgy or, um, you know, you get a little bit of figgy or kind of raisiny note out of it when you mix it with the black malts. The Amarillo and the Centennial are kind of doing that a little bit, you know, they're doing the same kind of thing in this beer. So, yeah. It has got a little bit of a kind of raisiny sharpness or something like that in the beginning. Then it just starts to fade away and you get the oranges initially and then that fades away a little bit more and it lingers there but then you start to get a little bit of the um, the nice uh, lemony quality of, of to the beer as well which is good. So pay attention to that when you're having this one. Um, and I'm finding as you go into the aftertaste as well a little bit of the black malt pushes its way out but at the same time the chocolate and the the bready notes are kind of balancing that out a little bit. It's the, the way that the malt base does its thing in this one I think is really nice. I complimented that earlier but for me that's the kind of thing that makes me really interested in this beer and they've also done something a little bit different I think by using Amarillo and Centennial. I don't, as I say, I don't think I've come across a black IPA that's used them but it certainly works. So you know in terms of um, a regular black IP, as I say, I always usually prefer the Imperial Blacks, but you know, this is a solid beer. You have to say thumbs up to these guys for this. They've done a really nice job of this one. It would be cool actually if they used the malt base for this. I'd love to see them brew it with, uh, you know, like with Williamette or, um, you know, Cascade or something like that to try and do a sort of Cascadian dark style black IP. I think that would be a really interesting experiment for them because they've got a really solid malt base with this. That might be something interesting for them to, to try with one of their brews. But in terms of what they've done already, it's really good and it's a bit different from what you're going to find with other black IPAs. So this one is really, really nice. But I'd love to see them do that little, um, you know, a Cascade and dark using the, the, the backbone of this beer. That would be another really interesting thing for them to do. So hopefully they'll maybe they'll try that at some point. Yeah, but a really interesting beer to sum this one up. Very, very interesting and I'm glad that I was able to review this. I always like going back to black IPAs like I said. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one then, um yeah, mid-bodied. Carbonation is fairly active in this one, but I think that it's because it's been in the bottle like you know two you know about two two and a half months something like that. Um, it's a bit of a wet mouth feel, not really an oily mouth feel. This one more of a wet mouth feel. Malt base has a really good balance between the the sweet and the kind of bitter side of things if you like, which is what you want from the style. But the chalk, the way the chocolate comes out, as I said, is the highlight of this one. Nice little bit of hoppy bitterness overall. If I was guessing the IBUs of this beer, maybe somewhere around. Um, I think around 50, maybe around the sort of 50-ish mark with this one. Um, could be 60 at a push, but you've got a little bit of bitterness from the malt base and you've got a little bit from the hops as well. So I would guess somewhere around the kind of 50 IBU region with this one. Uh, as I say, nicely balanced malt base, nice little bit of bitterness from the hops and some juicy fruit in there as well. As I say, you get oranges, you get lemons out of this, but you also get a little bit of a red fruity note in the beginning of this one. Um, but overall, a really nice beer and something a little bit different if you enjoy these uh, these black IPAs. I think it's very, very local to this one. I'm not sure if you can get it outside of Skona, but if you can order this one, and you like the style, have a go at it because it's it's really quite solid and as I said a little bit different from what you'd normally find in the style. So yeah, as I say, the, the unique point about this one is the, the way the chocolate kind of balances out the malt base a little bit because normally that would be caramel. So thumbs up to Cullen Brewery for this one. I do want to try a few more of their beers but let's leave it at that. As I say, a really solid um, black IPA this one. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Um, do check out my social media and um, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below and I will catch you guys very soon. It's probably been a bit of a longer review but as I say an interesting beer 
and uh, that's you know that's just what happens. You kind of rabbit on a little bit, but thumbs up to Cullen Brewery for this one, and I'm sure we'll review more from them in the near future. So the Spart IP, the Spart IPA from Cullen Brewery, just outside of Hoganes in Skåne, here in the south of Sweden. Until the next time, stand just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull.